we find ourselves once again reciting Yizkor. Just 12 days ago, we observed Yom Kippur and held a highly attended, deeply moving memorial service, one whose tone resonated with the themes of that holy day, introspection, solemnity, mortality. So why on Shemini Atzeret, the festive gathering that marks the end of Sukkot, our most joyful holiday, are we once more confronted with this somber service? Less than two weeks later, do we really need to do this all again? Now, I didn't create our calendar, and I'm sure I'm not the first person to say that it would be nice to have our fall holidays spaced out a little more. Maybe some of you here feel the same way. But just like Rabbi Akiva found wisdom behind every adornment on every letter in the Torah, I believe there must be wisdom behind every date and practice that make up the Jewish year. Part of what these two Yizkur services spaced so closely together can teach us is the importance, the necessity of repetition. Between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, I found myself listening to an episode of The Promised Podcast, a show that explores the top stories emerging from Israel every week. Before the panel delves into its explanations and debates, the host begins with a prologue, sometimes detailing a scientific discovery or a cultural development, but sometimes he describes the life of an Israeli or Jewish leader who died recently. The episode released between the High Holy Days was a compilation of the In Memoriam segments that had been aired in 5782. Now, I thought about just skipping over this episode, as I do whenever a TV or radio program I like runs a best of clip show. I had, after all, already heard these reflections over the past year. But as I let the episode play, I was surprised and then saddened to realize how many of the stories I had forgotten. True, I didn't know any of these people personally, but I would have assumed that months, and in some cases just weeks, after being moved, by these fascinating and heartfelt tributes, more would have stuck in my memory. But then, I thought about my grandparents, who I did know personally and loved dearly. There are so many pieces of their lives about which I have little to no information. I don't know what my grandpa's favorite toy was as a child, I don't know what songs would make up the soundtrack to my grandma's teenage years, what the moment was like when they decided to get married. I don't remember many of the little facts that came out about each of them at their funerals said just once at that tearful time. But I can retell effortlessly and automatically the story of how they met because that is the legend my family repeated over and over. I know that they first saw each other at a dance, that my grandma lit up a cigarette to look cool, that when my grandpa declined to take one himself, she immediately stubbed hers out and never smoked again. I know that every time my grandpa retold this story to us in greater detail, and with a quiet charisma born out of his infinite kindness that my aunts or my dad would well up with tears. The repetition didn't diminish the impact of the story. Rather, it reinforced its importance and emotional salience, and it ensured that I would remember my grandparents' affection for one another for decades to come. Every one of us co-owns stories like this about the people we love. A mother 
who stocked the pantry with goodies the other kids didn't have at their houses, so they'd always want to come over for a play date. A father who let you stay up way past your bedtime to watch those extra innings and then drove you to school late the next morning. A friend who made you laugh and feel whole again after your first heartbreak. When we share these stories, when, in addition to saying their names before our prayers of mourning, we repeat those incidents that add vibrancy and complexity and depth to their names, we honor and keep alive their memories. And so, we return to the same liturgy, repeating the words we said so recently on Yom Kippur, words we also may have said in a chapel, at the graveside, or in our homes when they died, whether days or years ago. By reciting these prayers again and again, as we grieve and as we mark the passing seasons, they gain resonance. We feel it when the cantor sings the first notes of El Male Rachamim, when we say that Adonai is our shepherd, when the rabbi begins reading that birth is a beginning and death a destination. We say it, we feel it, in the recurring sounds of the mourner's Kaddish, yit barach, v'yit tabach, v'yit pa'ar, v'yit roman, v'yit naseh. These prayers reach deep inside of us, inside that place where the cherished stories of our loved ones live. May reciting them once more encourage us to repeat those precious and sacred stories. We are called to repeat, retell, and remember. Zichonam Livracha, may their memories forever be a blessing. We take a moment now in silent prayer. <laughs> 